18 years old, NASA. As is her opponent in the blue, Kaiva Oya. Youth national champion, boxed in the Euros, Youth Euros in 2019. Got to the round of 16. Emil Gubernaliev of Azerbaijan in charge of this one. So this is our second fight of the session in the women's flyweight division, 51 kilos. And this replacing the quarterfinals. Round one. So Nasser Jordan in the red, Kaiva Oya of Finland in the blue. And we've got a couple of southpaws here, both of them boxing out of that stance. Kaiva Oya's got the height advantage. Generally speaking, a reach advantage comes with that. Not always, though. You do find a lot of fighters with unusually long arms. It's something that sees them suited to boxing in the first place. So it's no coincidence that that happens. So if you've got an inch or two on your opponent, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have the, the reach advantage. Kaifa Oya looks a kind of technically well-schooled fighter looking to try and use that jab. Referee just having a word with Kaiva Oya there about delivering punches with the inside of the glove, not with the knuckle part of the glove. Aiva Boxing, you land a, a scoring blow, a blow that the judges will take into account by using the knuckle part of the glove, and it has to hit the target area, which is the torso, and she did exactly that with that jab there, Kaiva. Oh, yeah. Needs to land on the torso or the front of the head. That wide left hand, that wide swinging left hand, that would have been the one that he was warning her about, the, the referee, but she throws that quite wide. <laughs> nice right hand from Kaiva Oya. Oh, yeah. Good one too as well, as NASA was coming forward. There was no real weight on it, but... Both punches landed, they were easy to see as well. That's one of the advantages of, of boxing on the outside is that punches delivered from there, like that jab there, are easy to see for the judges at ringside. It sounds like a quite basic point to make, but it can matter because judging fights is all about working out who has landed more. And if one fighter's punches are easy to see landing, And all the better for them. She's in control of this guy, for her, yeah. NASA's quite basic in her approach, as you can see there. She kind of ran forward behind the behind the jab. Kaifa, are you with the one-two? And the jab again. She could pick her off on the way in here quite comfortably. She's got enough skill to be able to do that, the Finnish fighter wearing blue. NASA is putting plenty into this, but she's a bit limited. And again there, she falls in behind that left hand, the weight completely over the top of the front foot, and that just means that there's only one thing that can happen there. When she throws it, she's going to keep moving forward. That's where her weight's taking her. She can't possibly stop herself. And if Kaivaroya sees that coming, she just needs to take half a step back or a step off to the side even and she'll be able to catch her coming forward. There won't really be anything that the NASA can do about it. <laughs> Ten nines across the board for Kaiva Oya. One of the easier rounds to score that these team of judges will have. Okay. 
Second down, please. Nice one, two there from Kaivo. Oh, yeah, and she can win the fight just throwing that. She is winning the fight throwing that. And I think she could probably look to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Put a bit more snap on it. There's a decent one, two again. And exactly as I was saying at the end of the round, Nasser is looking to come forward. She fancies it, but she just doesn't have the the technique to go with her with her spirit, if you like. And really, Kaivaroya just has to wait for her to do that. Wait for her to launch herself. Keep her composure. And as I said, maybe just a little half step back, give herself the room. To punch and land on it as she's coming forward. There's that nice one too. May as well just keep snapping that out. Oof. That was a heavy landing over on the far side of the ring. Nothing deliberate about it. Tangle of feet and Kaivaroya took Nasser down there. You could hear the thud as they both landed. A couple of good jabs there from Kaivaroya. And you can see when she's about to step in with real intent there, Nasser, because you look at her front foot, she actually picks that front foot up and steps in. She just did it there. So what she's doing is it's completely telegraphed, really. You know what's coming. She, you see that knee move, you see that foot picked up and there's going to be the left hand followed mainly by that lead right hand followed by the left. A minute to go in round two. And Nasa just goes for a little bit of a walk. One, two again, just catches her on the way in. She could get the stoppage here, Kaivaro, yeah. I think if she just put her foot down and started to let her hands go a little bit more. I don't think the referee will take too much encouraging to step in for a, a standing count before long. That nice one, two again there. And she's just, just getting pinged here. Nasser, every time she, she comes forward, Kaiva Oya knows exactly what's coming. There's that one, two again, and again, and again. Three, four times in a row there. She's very, very game, Nasser. You have to give her credit for that. She's desperately trying to land that left hand, but she can't get inside the the one-two of Kaivo Oya. She's had 32 bouts. Kaivo Oya began boxing in 2016, so a 10-8 in there from Machi Jurgot, and I could completely understand that. A bit surprised, actually, there aren't. There are more 10-8s in, uh, in those scorecards because that was dominant. What Aiva judges are looking to do, I've been saying this the last few days and, and I will repeat it every now and again because it's important. They're looking to interpret dominance when they're giving their scores. So if you've got a dominant round like she had there, Kaivo Oya, you would score that 10-8. If you win the round, but it's a kind of regulation round win if you want, then that'll be 10-9. They can give 10 sevens and 10 sixes. 10 sevens has got to be, that's got to be a, a very dominant display. 10 six, you, I mean, you just, you never see a 10 six. If somebody's won, won around 10 six, then really the referee should have stopped it. You shouldn't ever really see a 10 six by that rationale, if you, if you get my meaning. If somebody's dominated to that extent, then the fight should have been stopped. And as I say, that's why you don't see them, because the referees know what they're about and they just wouldn't let a contest like that continue. Good left hand again there from Kaivo Oya. Standing counts, knockdowns as well. Are just part of the overall picture for Aiba judges. They don't necessitate 
the loss of a point by the fighter who's on the receiving end of them. So it's not like professional boxing like that. In the pro boxing ring, if you get knocked down, then you'll almost certainly lose that round 10-8, almost regardless of what happens in the rest of the round. It's one of the kind of problems with the professional boxing scoring, in, in my view. A flash knockdown, and you're probably going to lose around 10-8. You could then completely dominate the next round and only win it 10-9. And still she comes forward here, Nasser. Right hand. Uh, from Kaivo Oya. He just sticks that jab hand in Nasser's face, looks for the one two. Well, she's saying, Kaivo Oya, that the Nasser bitter. She's got a little mark on the shoulder there. You could see a little bit of a mark on the shoulder and the referee, I don't know if he took a point there or not, I couldn't quite see, but I don't think he saw it. Kaivo Oya stopped and pointed it out to him, pointed the blemish out to him, saying that Nasser had bitten her. If the referee saw it, then he would have to disqualify her, I'd have thought. You can't really just take a, a fighter's word for it. And she's right above me now, Kai Fawaya, and I can see the blemish on the shoulder. It's difficult to... It's difficult to know exactly how that would have happened, but having said that, the kind of feeling you would get from, from a, a set of teeth clamping down on your shoulder, I think. I think you would probably know what it was. But anyway, maybe we'll find out in due course. But it's not going to have any effect on the rest of this fight because Kaifa Woya is completely in charge of this. I cannot believe that Nasser has deliberately bitten Kaifa Woya. I think her mouth was probably hanging open as she came forward, landed on the shoulder, and, and that was what would have happened there because the way she's gone about this fight is just... I would be utterly astonished if she turned out to be the kind of kind of fighter who would deliberately bite someone. I just can't see it. And again, she just keeps coming forward here. Good jab there from Kaivaro, yeah. It does seem a bit riled up, actually, in the last minute. But Nasser just keeps coming forward. As I said, there's nothing wrong with her with her will to win, there's nothing wrong with her desire, but she's just got to try and learn some technique. Because without wishing to be too cruel, she doesn't really have any. And that's why she gets hit so much. And against a bigger puncher, that would be a huge, huge problem. Bell goes at the end of the fight. And it's going to be a comprehensive win for Pyla Kaivoya. And that's the story of it. That jab hand, that one-two, just landing on her again and again and again and again. So Kai Vroya goes through. Unanimous decision, some 10 8s in there. And a point was taken, a point was taken by the referee for what Kai Vroya claimed was a, was a bite. So that was a curious incident in the final round. 
Tonates from Sri Lanka and Poland there. So a comprehensive win as, as comprehensive 